What if you could generate AI video live as you stream, not waiting minutes for a render, but getting a high quality video feed with less than a second of delay? For a long time, that's been the holy grail for generative AI. Well, a new AI tool just dropped that makes this a reality, and the code is fully open source. It's called self-forcing, and it's a groundbreaking piece of tech that finally cracks the code for real-time interactive video generation by fixing a fundamental flaw that has plagued these models for years. So what's the big problem it solves? It's an issue called exposure bias. Think of it like this. Most AI video models are trained by always looking at perfect, real video frames to predict the next one. But when it's time to actually generate a video from scratch, they have to rely on their own imperfectly generated frames. One small mistake early on can cause a chain reaction, leading to errors that accumulate until the video quality completely degrades. Self-forcing tackles this head on. At its core, it's a new training method that you can apply to an existing model in a post-training stage. It forces the model to learn from its own creations during training, bridging the gap between how it learns and how it performs. But let's look at the proof because the performance numbers are insane. This tool generates high quality 480p videos with an initial latency of around 0.8 seconds, after which it generates frames in a streaming fashion at roughly 16 frames per second on an H100 GPU. And for those without a data center card, it can hit around 10 frames per second on a single RTX 490 with some optimizations. To put that in perspective, the developers applied this technique to a powerful open source model called 1.2.1. The original 1.2.1 model takes a staggering 103 seconds to generate a video. The self-forcing version produces video of slightly better visual quality in just 0.69 seconds. That is a mind-blowing 150 times faster in latency. Now, let's critically examine the results because this is where the theory meets reality. On their project page, they show a walkthrough of the local interface. You can see the prompt box and advanced settings like Torch Compile or FT8 Quantization, which are great options for power users looking to optimize performance. But the key moment is when start generation is clicked. You see frames populating in real time with the video playing simultaneously. This isn't a render queue, this is a live streaming generation and it forms the basis for everything we're about to see. So let's start with a classic challenge for any AI model, physics. Here we have a video of water being poured into a cup. What's impressive to me isn't just that it looks like water, but the model's grasp of fluid dynamics. Notice the transparency, the way the light refracts through the liquid and how the volume correctly displaces in the cup. There's no unnatural clipping or leaking pixels, which is a common failure point for lesser models. Here's another fantastic physics example. A ram is drinking from a stream. The moment it lifts its head is the part to focus on. The model generates individual water droplets falling from its mouth, correctly obeying gravity. It understands that wet fur has a different texture and that water should drip down. These are the micro details that separate a good generation from a great one. And look at this one, honey dripping. The model clearly understands viscosity. This liquid doesn't behave like water, it's thick, it's slow, and it convincingly folds onto itself in layers. This demonstrates a deep understanding of physical properties. The same goes for volumetric effects like smoke or steam. Here's a girl smoking, the smoke billows and dissipates with a natural, unpredictable motion. The model understands how light should pass through the semi-transparent element, which is incredibly sophisticated. Beyond pure physics, let's talk about capturing natural, nuanced motion. Here we have a chef mixing vegetables. It's not just a generic stirring animation. You can see the subtle wrist movements and how the individual pieces of vegetables interact in the bowl. Or this clip of a dog playing the drums. The model has a great grasp of canine anatomy and how it would move to perform this action. The wagging tail is a fantastic secondary animation that adds a whole nother layer of life and believability, showing the model can handle multiple complex motions at once. The model also demonstrates an impressive understanding of cinematography. Look at this drone shot over a jungle. It's not a static scene. The model simulates a smooth camera pullback, correctly adjusting the parallax and perspective of the trees in the river below. This shows a strong grasp of 3D space and how a camera moves within it. And in this close-up of a chameleon, look at the incredible detail. You can see every single bump and scale on its skin, and these high-frequency details are maintained even as the creature moves. The shallow depth of field, keeping the subject tack sharp while blurring the background, is another professional cinematic choice that AI has learned to replicate. Now, it's crucial to find the limits of any new tool, 
No model is perfect. In this example, the prompt called for an adorable kangaroo in a green floral dress, but the generated creature's head shape and snout look much more like a mouse or another rodent. This is a great example of a common issue where concepts can blend in the model's latent space. It shows that nailing the specific morphology of every single animal is still a developing area. But then you see an example like this, and it really underscores the tool's core strength. Here we have two pandas, wearing glasses, working at a desk with pens and paper. This is a very complex scene with multiple subjects and objects. I want you to watch it all the way through. Notice that nothing changes. The glasses stay on their faces, the pens stay in their paws, the papers on the desk remain solid. The scene is perfectly, temporally consistent. This is direct, undeniable evidence that the self-forcing method works. A typical AI video would likely fall apart here with objects warping or flickering after a few seconds. The stability across the full 10 seconds is the key takeaway. So this brings us to the direct comparisons. The developers claim the tool is faster and better, and they provide side-by-side -side examples against other major open source models of a similar 1.3 parameter size. Now, 12.1 is an exceptionally good model, and its results are great, but in these cherry-picked examples, self-forcing's quality is arguably a step above. And when you look at the comparison with COSVID, you can clearly see the oversaturation issue we discussed. The colors get too intense, whereas self-forcing maintains a natural look. The other models shown, like Maggie Eye or Skyreels, simply aren't competing at the same quality level here. In this lineup, the best results are consistently from self-forcing. So, the evidence is pretty clear, the quality is top tier, and it consistently holds its own against and often beats the competition, all while being dramatically faster. So, that brings us to the big question, how does it actually pull this off? So, how does this magic actually work? On screen now is a great diagram from the developers that really breaks it down. On the left, you can see the core idea. It starts by generating a frame, but here's the clever part. To generate the next frame, it doesn't look at a perfect real video frame. Instead, it looks at the frame it just made. You can see the arrows looping the output back around to become the new input. This is the self-forcing autoregressive rollout. It perfectly mirrors how it's going to have to perform in the real world, which forces it to learn from its own potential mistakes and stops those cascading errors before they start. At the top of that diagram, you see a formula that represents the holistic loss we mentioned, where the AI judges the quality of the entire generated clip against real videos, not just individual frames. Now, the diagram on the right shows how this process is so efficient. As the model generates each new frame, that's the temporal AR rollout on the vertical axis, it doesn't have to reprocess the entire video history. Instead, as you can see from the KV caching arrows, it stores the essential information from the last frame and passes it directly to the next one. This makes it incredibly fast and is the key to its efficient rolling KV cache for generating endless video. This process has a time complexity of just O at LT, which is far more efficient than older methods that would either not support KV caching or would require recomputing it constantly. And now for the absolute best part, the practical details. The code for this amazing tool is officially released and it's fully open source on GitHub. The implementation is based on 1.2.1 and COSVID, so it's built on a solid foundation. You can download it and run it yourself, and the hardware requirements, while steep, are not impossible. The developers have confirmed it runs on a Linux OS with an NVIDIA GPU that has at least 24 gigabytes of memory, which means cards like the RTX 490 are supported, along with the more powerful A100 and H100 GPUs. Now, to get those top-tier real-time speeds, all the speed tests were conducted on a single NVIDIA H100 GPU. The training itself, which only takes about one and a half to three hours, was done on a massive cluster of 64 H100 GPUs, each with 80 gigabytes of memory. So what this means is that while you need a powerful PC, this isn't restricted to just data centers anymore. If you have a high-end gaming or workstation rig with a card like the 4090, you can actually run this. There's even a frame-wise version of the tool that pushes the latency down to an incredible 0.45 seconds on an H100, making it perfect for the most latency-sensitive applications. This tool is a monumental step forward. By solving the exposure bias problem, it unlocks the true potential of autoregressive models for genuinely interactive applications, 
We're talking live video streaming with real-time AI effects, video games with environments and characters that are generated on the fly, and complex world simulators for robotics and research. This is a shift from AI generation being something you wait for to something you can interact with. I've dropped the link to the GitHub in the description below, so go check out the code. Let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.